Hello. In this video, I'll be showing how to photograph the vortex formed in a magnetic stirrer. If you have not seen my previous video on how to build a magnetic stirrer, please click the thumbnail now. This stirrer is particularly useful since it is fully automatic and will maintain the vortex by itself. This allows for complete focus on photography and not on maintaining the vortex. I will be using a square jar for this since round jars act like a lens and distort the vortex. Using a square jar allows for the clearest pictures of the vortex, although a round jar may add some artistic effect. I'll be using a camera on a tripod for this since it's the most stable and I'm going to be turning off the lights. The LEDs that are lighting the jar are not particularly bright, so using the tripod allows for complete exposure and it doesn't allow for any shake. So let me set up the lighting for this. I've set up the lighting, which is basically just the lighting built into the stirrer and no other room lights. I'm using a lens with a short focal distance but not a macro lens for this. So right now the lens is about six inches away from the jar. And what can be done with this is to do like long exposures, like half second, one second exposures. And you can see the vortex developing and shifting and it also gives a pretty cool blurred appearance. The cyan and red and blue and all the different colors that are formed also form interesting photographic effects. I also mess with the tripod to get angles like this. Angles like this are also neat and when there is a completely dark background following the rule of thirds makes a more dramatic image. Using a straight on view right into the jar also makes for a cool photograph. If I turn off the LED lighting and use a flashlight with a piece of paper on it as a diffuser and put that on top of the jar, that also allows for some white lighting effects and that can also be combined with the bottom lighting to get even more interesting colors. I also found that aluminum powder, just shiny aluminum, when added to the water can create some pretty cool effects. So a tiny amount is added it initially floats on the top, but if it's covered and stirred quite vigorously, the aluminum will start to go into the water. It won't dissolve, but it'll float in the water. And then that, when it's lit up, can look pretty cool too. But when you switch off the stirrer and there's the aluminum in there, you can see all the patterns forming as the aluminum swirls in the water and at different stages of different velocities of the water those patterns when lit overhead or from the side can make some really cool pictures. I'm adding a bit of red food coloring to it so the contrast between the aluminum and the water could be even more pronounced. This probably could be added in Photoshop, but it's more genuine to do it like this. Flashes can be used with various effects to capture the swirls, but the problem arises with glare on the glass. But sometimes, if you have the angle right, a flash can be really good for getting the high resolution patterns when there's a high velocity inside the jar and the, there isn't enough light to get it, so flash works well for that. When oil and water are put in the same jar, you can also get some pretty cool patterns out of it when you stir it. I 
going to add some green dye to the water and take some pictures of this with the oil. I have a laser pointer set up and some black ink inside the water so you can kind of see the Tyndall effect and you can also see the laser being dis diffracted by the vortex. I'm going to also take some pictures of this. Using a laser with a top light also works pretty cool. Using a more vigorous stirring, a top flashlight, and the flash, you can get some really cool photos that almost look like they were uh, computer renders because they're black and white. And Also, try using different angles to get different mixtures between background and foreground in different compositional styles depending on what the shape of the glass is and if you can look up on it, look down on it, etc. I got out a macro extension tube so I can take even bigger pictures of the vortex. And since it's really hard to set the focus, using manual focus for this, I actually stuck an end of a spoon inside the vortex so I could set the focus manually that way. I hope you enjoyed all the techniques and photographs in this video. Thanks for watching.